Okay, so this is the, I think, final section of um, our widget and layout tutorial. Um, and what we're going to do now is replace the widgets that we had before with real buttons and knobs and stuff. So uh, our empty widgets, which are the gray guys. So uh, let's start with the knobs. So let's grab a knob component. And I'm just going to work in slash project one at first and just get things ready. Knob fixed. And so this is a knob component. And if we look in the, in the view, there's no labels or anything, which I think I'm fine to just keep it simple and, uh, and also make them labelless and field list. So we can go to the label page of the knob and turn off its display. Uh, we can go to the field page, turn off its display. And uh, I think that's good. You'll also see in the knob page there is a horizontal stretch mode for the knob. So I can, I can make that fill as well. And before it's set to fix width, and the reason it's set to me.par.h, which is the height, to make it square, right? So it makes the gadget square, which, which works when you've got a label on and a field on, and you just want this to be nicely justified to the left. So it's kind of, that's freestyle, but the reason why that expression is there is to kind of get you thinking creatively about how this stuff lays out and just play around and see what works and what doesn't work. Um, we've, we've worked pretty hard at trying to make these fairly robust. They might not do everything you want, but um, you should be able to get quite a bit of mileage out of them. Okay, so we don't want our field, we don't want our label, and we want our knob to stretch. Fill. Okay, so th that's good. Now we're in a pretty good position for this to be nicely stretchy, right? Because we want this, we know we're gonna drop this in with fill fill. So let's do that once, well, let's not do that yet. So let's cut this knob fixed and let's go find a location for it. So I'm gonna open up the view here so we can see what we're doing. And let's go put it right there. Okay, so that's inside of slash UI, layout one, uh, but section one, row one, widget one. So this is what we want to replace, right? So let's delete all the widgets. We know, just to, just to remind you, the only thing that these, the only way that these are configured is that the horizontal mode is set to fill and the vertical mode is set to fill. So that's the only thing. So if I delete this and paste that with that knowledge in here, all I need to do, there's a bug, right, sometimes, if, if a knob comes down without a graphic, just cut it and paste it. Eventually the graphic will show up and that should be fixed real soon. So, um, so let's set it to fill horizontal and fill vertical. And they're, now they're nicely filling, the knobs nicely filling our section. Notice these are clones, so we're automatically getting updates there. And let's call this knob fixed one because we want our order to be right. And then go paste, paste, paste. And now we've got our four knobs. And you'll see, um, oh, as well, the A isn't centered very nicely. Um, you can fix that. It's fine for text, for regular words, but if you've got a single character, you can actually turn on a better centering system, which is called um, align mode. If you set the align mode to use text bounding box, then it will, instead of using the metrics inside the font, which sometimes will cause um, uh, there's in information inside of the letters and the, or the execution inside the font. I'm not exactly sure how it works. Nevertheless, it, it can end up with single characters for them to be slightly offset. Um, and so you'll see in various places where you would n often either have a single letter or an icon, you can turn on the align mode, which is use text bounding box. And this is a feature actually of the text top now. So you might find that useful in general in the font page. You can horizontally align using the 
font metrics, which can often create single character offsets that are incorrect for being perfectly centered, or the text bounding box, which will ignore that and just take the bounding box and snap it right in the middle. Um, okay, so that's good, right? Oh, yeah, and then as well, you'll see that the values are changing, and that's because we've cloned our whole the values, when I change uh, knob one, the values for these guys change. So you'll want to unclone these now that everything's set up. So go to row and just disable. You might keep the row one there and just turn off enable cloning. And that way, if you come back here and you make modifications to, to, the, to this set, you can easily come here and then enable cloning and you'll get your changes. Like, for example, let's say we wanted to change the color of the of the ra of this range thing, right? So if I, I select all guys here, and I'm going to change the color to something bright, uh, there, green, and uh, maybe make the level range scale a little bit bigger, the range and the level, so it's a little bit clearer because they're so small, and do that for all of them. Sorry, so uh, level scale. Range scale. There, they got a thicker indicator level now. Um, yeah, so once you've done that, then you can easily come back to row two and row one and just enable cloning, and then they, everything gets updated. So there's some strategies there for making it a little bit easier for you to make changes and then propagate them. The advanced widget, widget system will actually have a, um, a, a skinning um, settings system. Um, and so that'll be it'll it'll get much 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 easier um, when we roll out the next gen stuff. At any rate, that works for now. <clears throat> okay, uh, now we're good. Let's go grab that that uh, we're gonna do the faders now. Let's go grab that slider that we set up already. We will probably add a vertical slider. I'm realizing that we should probably just have this ready for you to go. But at least now you know how to make a vertical slider. And this is ready to go, so copy. And go into our section two. Again, we're just deleting widgets with their fill fill, so I don't need to think too hard. I just delete these guys, paste in our new guy, and set him to fill fill. Layout, fill, fill. And then let's call this slider whores one and Paste, 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 and that's good. So now we've got our sliders. Uh, the next one is buttons, which will be quite easy. We've got quite a few different buttons. Let's just use button momentary for now. So go up into layout one, section three. We just need to replace these guys, so delete the widgets, grab button momentary, call it button momentary one. Immediately, well, we don't need the labels. We don't need the label, so I'll turn off the label. We want our actual button to fill the whole thing, so go to button alignment. Our horizontal mode will be fill. And of course, we need our uh, widget as well to be set to fill, so fill fill. And you'll notice it's nicely filling here now. Our Everything else will stay intact that we set up already. Copy, paste, 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 and we've got four buttons. Okay, so same thing will happen over here, but these are already configured, so copy this. Go into layout one, home, section one. So inside the row, containers or layouts, get rid of these guys, and just paste button momentary one, and then <coughs> uh, this is going to be eight of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, done. And maybe we don't want the label there because the thing doesn't have the label, so the button label is here. There's an on and an off label. So off label is off, on. So on, off. 
<coughs> okay. Next, we need two buttons here and a slider there. So, just need one of these. Go into our section here. Okay, so um, let's just delete these and rebuild it. So we need one button momentary, but I, if I remember correctly, we were um, setting the fill, the horizontal fill was fixed, right? That was, that was a fixed one, so, because it's a button, and we need two of these. Okay, so that's good. So now we just need our slider. Button, slider, horizontal slider here. Um, okay, so let's see what's going on here. Well, we certainly need it to fill height, right? Well, we want it to fill fill no matter what. So fill, fill, okay. We don't need the label, turn off the label, and we don't need the value. So turn off the value, and that's good. But our order's wrong, and we, maybe we don't want to name them all, um, we don't want to name them all like widget one, two, three, and it's going to, we need them to be alphanumeric. So we can override the order determined by the name by using the, um, the align order parameter here. So we can set the align order value to be zero here, one for this guy, and two for this guy. And that will override no matter what these those values will override the if they're all different then it'll use those integers to order instead of using the name the alphanumeric name so so now we've got our guys done there okay um well it's pretty easy for me to see that these are the same these match so there's no point in doing that again so just go grab these two sections section two and section three and get copied over here. And you could clone these guys so that if you did make a modification here, at least it would update here. That's just a strategy. There's no need for me to do that now, but, um, but just keep in mind, use cloning to your advantage when you're setting everything up. Before you start really getting into the finer tune things, start, try to keep things cloned and general as possible until everything is configured and dialed in and then you can start removing the clones and um, and then um, it'll be easier for you to kind of dial in your look etc okay and then finally these guys so this is um, two rows of buttons which we actually haven't uh, or is it knobs or buttons yeah it's two rows of three buttons each which we haven't done yet, but I can look here and I can see, or wait, here. This kind of has what I need here, right? And so is this, this is four. So why don't we just grab section three and go up to that area, which is here. And if we set the buttons to be, the children to be stacking top to bottom, with, we'll add in our margin so we can see that it's working, which is fives here and three here. Um, then I think we're good. We just drop that in, paste, copy, paste. Make sure they're set to fill height, which they're not. And that's done. But we don't need three, we need, or we don't need four, we need three buttons. So that's good there. That's good. Okay, that's done. Then we need a random button. So we can just grab one of these and go into the extra button. That's kind of okay, but maybe we don't want it to be filling that whole area. And that's what we see um, in the layout. It's not filling the whole area. So we can finally adjust that here, right? Which we I have the anchor system already set up. So the extra button, we can just fudge up the bottom anchor like that. Okay, that's good. 
And then we want our logo, which we can just use a label for that. So label, drop it in, go to layout page, fill, or to the, yeah, the labels layout page and go fill. And then remove the offset, center the text, increase the font, make it bold. Widget page, change your font to Arial Black, change the label to be OHM, make your background color transparent, make your widget background color be transparent, and make our layout, our logo layout, maybe make that transparent as well and maybe change the color of the text. <clears throat> Fine, and then make it bigger. There. Or you could load a texture, because like I said, you could just put a texture in the background here, um, because this is a fixed um, size. So you could put in a, you could, Take note of this, it's 128 by 36 pixels. Go into Photoshop, save the image, just load it into the background, and you're done. You've got your logo loaded. Um, and then this is just a row of knobs. We have a row of knobs here. Okay, so this is the nice thing with widgets is that they also come, they also come with a right-click menu. If you hold the control button and go right-click, and then go, you can access the network for this guy. So go network. Now I've got these guys, copy them, and then go into knobs, which we want the children to be stacked left to right, spacing to be three, margin to be five, and then paste them in there. And there, we've got, our, we've got four knobs there. Um, so that's actually, it. I could sit here and dial in that look with you, but I don't think there's a need for that. You can play around. Um, and we've got a fully functional uh, system. So um, yeah, that's, that's how you build panels with widgets. Um, in the next sections, things we haven't covered yet are um, how to promote all of these values to your top level components so that your own system has values all centralized in the correct location, which will set them up for being a presetable and controllable from the outside. Um, that's coming up in the next section. And, um, and yeah, that's it. So thank you. <laughs>